Alright, so development four, our next to our last development cycle. So what I'm going to have you do this time is a little different, but also a little of the same of what we've done before. So let me just give you the high level overview and then go through at least conceptually or show you demo the what I did. Okay, so in this case, I've created what's called a base requirement. So basically, what you're doing here is taking your de develop it three code, and you're implementing what we've learned in this section about getting user input, store using local storage, right, and then updating local storage when data changes. So what that means is you need to be able to allow the user input, uh, and then allow them to edit something about that input. And you could you'll see on mine where I had to rethink my edit mode because given a game, I wouldn't want the user to be able to edit the game output. So you'll see what I did, and you'll need to rethink how you've done this. But I'm going to actually have you actually think about this before we get here. So and then and this is basically what I was talking about here, right? So getting giving give the user the ability to edit code they've inputted. Right, and you can use checkbox to change the status of data and our buttons to remove. I mean, I you know I want something in there, and then implement some search or filtering uh, functionality in your data. Uh, make sure you don't allow the user to submit. This is actually the requirement I added uh, with uh, putting required on your input HTML elements, and then your code needs to function. Remove all debugging and code you and code you've commented out or code that's not being used, and then refactor uh, your code to use arrow functions and shorthand arrow functions where possible, and handling errors. Um, in reading local storage, and this accounts for 80% of your grade. Basically, we're just recreating what we've done in your in your develop it three for the last um, what we've been doing and learned together in your other program. So here's the other thing. So now um, additional 20% or your 20% of your to add up to 100 comes from uh, adding functionality to your code. So I'll demonstrate what I've done just to give you some ideas. But and you do need to implement CSS design, uh, responsive design, um, and you can look at my week 13. But come up with your own design how you want your page to be responsive. Okay. So of course do this in develop it four, right? Um, and then understand the review process. So let's just go through that and then I'll show you my code. So this is actually going to be the same process we use for develop it three is that um, it is actually due by the end of the day on November 19th. Um, now you can and there are a couple of you that do come see me before um, it's due which is fine but if you come and see me during that week after then I'll allow you to modify the code based on what I see but um, I will uh, when it's submitted actually give you uh, a, a grade uh, at that point so you know um, how much how off you are how much more you need to work okay all right so on mine, so here's what I did. I actually had a really good time playing with my kitty cat match. So here's actually uh, my updated. So in this case, I kept pretty much what I had already as far as, you know, you give a name and then you guess which one of the kittens. But here's what I've added. I've added a leaderboard and I've added a game uh, play details. And this is where I allow the user, once they play, to actually give a review of the game. And then I actually do a star so it shows which games have been reviewed. Uh, but this is was the um, what I would say the, the more fun part of what I ended up doing here was I took all this detailed data and I did a, a summary uh, for the number of wins and attempts. Okay, so uh, I'll show you in a second how I did this, but um, this was actually using something we haven't uh, done yet, and uh, it's it was good to play with, and it was the idea of using another library, which you can do for this one, and I ended up using a library called Lodash. Okay, and um, so anyway, so now, like, so if I wanted to play, and actually I ended up putting this up on my GitHub, so you can actually play or just look at it if you want. Oh, actually, Tiger's not a kitten. <laughs> so, uh, so let's see, right now, right, I have one win and three attempts, so this is nothing different, where I have two wins and four attempts. Uh, but what it does is it lists the most current game first, so you can see here I'm actually using moments to save time from now. 
And then this is probably the piece, uh, there's a couple pieces I need to implement, which is more of a search, although I do do a sort here. But if I go details, this is where I'm actually going to do some, uh, you know, this was the game you played, I chose this, you chose that, and some more information. But right now, this is just where they can uh, love this game, right, and then return. Uh, so you can see that one was starred. Okay. So um, if I'll give you the link, or if you just want to look at mine, so it's uh, Rio Waller GitHub IO KM for Kitty Cat Match, and then index.html if you want to go look at that, which means you can also see the code uh, as well. So let me just give you a little bit of an overview of the code. So instead of edit, uh, I used a review, uh, and, and then uh, which is fine, right? Because I do allow them to review the game because it didn't, like I said before, make sense for them to actually um, be able to edit the game. That that wouldn't actually make sense from a game perspective. So that's where you're going to have to rethink. And I see here, I actually do have a little more work to do, but you have to rethink, you know, the way you're getting data and then you're presenting it, right? To to and again, the reason you're rethinking this is because I'm adding a requirement for you to do uh, something a little more here, okay? So let me go now show you, right? So here is um, where I call processing data, right? So this is when somebody hits submit, I pass in an event, and we can look at the event list here in a second. Uh, and then I determine who wins. This is nothing new. And but here's where it's changed, right? Of course, uh, using the UUID, which you need to use, and then setting a timestamp for when they played. And then I I, I grab some more data here, right? So game ID is something, of course, from the UUID. I did set an outcome using a ternary operator. Uh, and then uh, user selection, kitty selection, timestamp, game review null, and then t reviewed at. So this allowed me, so by getting more data, not necessarily user data, but data that was true as of the time it was submitted, it allowed me to then do some other things. Okay, so this is where I actually go through and sort. And so here's where I did, um, and this I got, actually gave a reference here to where I found this, and it was on Stack Overflow. And this is the thing, if you use code from somewhere else, you need to tell us where you got that. So in this case, I'm going to group uh, by group by player and game, uh, and this is where right I get my leaderboard. Right. So basically, what I do is I <coughs> do what's called a group by, and a group by is part of the lodash. So all I had to do was include lodash in my index file, uh, and then run uh, this underscore or uh, this dash actually represents the lodash. Um, this is a method in there, and it's group by. So actually, I'm calling it on my data. I'm saying group by, uh, and this looks at the player, and then I'm mapping that and getting the value. And so in this case, right, think about I've actually got a console log in here, so I'd want to actually get rid of that before I went in for review. So then what I did is I could have played with this a little more, but I decided I wanted the output a little differently, so I actually ended up just doing a for each in here and made another array just for my leaderboard, and then I returned the leaderboard to be printed, right? So, but the new thing uh, that we haven't seen is here is really using Lodash to do that summary because I could have done it without this but man it would have been much more complicated and using uh, something uh, that gives you basically what you need uh, is the benefit of using these libraries okay okay so uh, let's see what else was there in here there was really besides that there was obviously some new things I did here is how I actually used a Unicode character. Uh, I went and found the Unicode character and only if the person, because I'm iterating over my gameplay, if the person uh, equaled null, which means, an, I'm sorry, the person dot game review, then I create a span. So this is the idea of how I actually uh, created, I haven't done it there, this is the idea of actually how I put a star beside if they've been reviewed or not. Um, and so again, you can look up UU character Unicode characters. They're really simple to use and they're fun to use because they add a little uh, fun uh, output to that. And then uh, generating my L, uh, my DOM, 
right? So actually generate. Yeah, so what I did is when I generated my leaderboard DOM, I sorted first and actually just like we've seen before, iterated over each of my entries. Uh, this is where I actually had the array that came out of my um, group by, right? So where I returned the array, I uh, passed that into uh, my generate leader DOM and then just outputted that, okay? And then use the moments. So um, that's actually one thing I didn't specify that I'd like to is you need to use moment, uh, some kind of timestamp or some kind of date. Um, if you don't use moment, then you just use the standard JavaScript. But I suspect most of you will use that just because it it makes it so much easier. And then uh, this is just as it is, right? Just a simpler, and actually that's one of the things I wanna go through, because I think there's a way I could simplify this. Uh, but this is just basically, right, my first file that gets loaded on my uh, index page. Uh, actually, it's not the first, but the other two are the libraries, right? So there's my Lodash, uh, there's my UUID. Uh, actually, it should be actually the other way around. So that's one of the things you, I actually took me a few minutes one time I was rebuilding this to figure out, it's like, oh yeah, what was the order of that? Because you have to think about when you need things, right? So actually you can load functions because they're not, you know, until we actually start using them in there, you, you know, in this case you could have run them either way. All right, so let's go back over here just to kind of look to see if I've gone to at least uh, giving you a high level view of what I did. Um, again, it's not to say that you have to do something like this, but you you need to because here's going to be the probably the more challenging part of this is adding uh, some unique code, your own CSS responsive design. Right, is adding some new functionality. And again, if you use something, just reference that you used it, right? Just like I did in my code. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, I'm going to have you, uh, actually I'm not going to say that because I'm gonna, now going to go uh, create the uh, Learn Together Week 14 that will help you prep uh, for Develop It 4. Alright, have a good one. Talk to you later.